Hearing nothing. We gather here on Wednesday evenings and talk about the early days of single sideband. Tonight, I happen to be on the first commercial single sideband exciter that I'm aware of that was actually on the market. Some say there was a, a, a company called Eldeco that produced something that was advertised in the magazines in about 1950, but I don't know if anybody has ever seen one. Central Electronics put out the 10A in 19, uh, well, late 51, early 52, something like that. And uh, it was designed by Wes Shum, W9DYV, in his basement in Chicago. It's putting out about 7 watts. And I uh, converted a night kit uh, CW novice transmitter uh, to a one-tube linear amplifier, and that jacks at uh, 7 watts up to 40 watts. And I'm feeding that into my Drake L4B. I'm receiving on a Drake R4 by way of a transceive converter that I built such that the receiver VFO is also the VFO for the transmitter. We get together here on Wednesday evenings. Buy, sell, trades are appropriate if they're vintage radio related. And this is a great place if you have a technical problem, you want to ask for some advice because there's a lot of expertise uh, found here. And the top of the line is here tonight. We've talked to them already. I'm going to uh, talk to the earlies, then we'll give it to Dan. Maybe uh, maybe Jay will come in. If Rusty's not having a storm, maybe he'll uh, get in here lately. <clears throat> and if the storms kick up here, I will disappear. Let me talk to the guys that are here. Uh, uh, KC5WOF. Uh, hey, Jimmy, you still there somewhere? K5LYN. He was here earlier. Maybe he'll come back. Uh, how about uh, N5OJB, Denver? Yes, this is N5OJB, Denver, in Gonzales, Texas. And uh, I'm talking to you on a, a TS820 uh, and a, driving an NCL2000 into a, a fan dipole, homemade fan dipole. And uh, getting uh, about uh, about a kW out of the uh, out of the old NCL 2000, and I'm using a, an SM57 microphone on this old Kenwood, a Sure mic, uh, st- and it's a stage mic. Uh, Dennis, everything's working good here. We've had rain all day long, and uh, still raining and misting out there right now. So uh, back to net N5 OJB. Outstanding uh, signal, Denver, and your late, your your Drake. I mean, your uh, national amplifier there. You're always the only guy that has one of those. Nicely done. Okay, how about uh, uh, let's talk to uh, Louisiana W5 X-ray United. What do you say, David? Over to you. K5 LYN. K5 LYN W5 XU. Well, good evening, gentlemen. I am talking on a uh, a C line, a Drake C line that uh, I purchased in uh, 1995. About two weeks ago, I rebuilt all of them, and uh, the transmitter right now is sick. I suspect that the uh, matched pair of uh, six JB6s that I purchased at a hand fest the uh, proprietor of the, of the uh, devices uh, promising me that they were perfect and new and never used out of the box. I suspect that those were maybe not quite that. Anyway, uh, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking about 100 watts right now uh, on a, in a dipole. I, uh, we're, I am in Covington, Louisiana, just north of New Orleans. I'm uh, presently I'm working on a uh, a Drake TR40, uh, a Drake TR4 CW RIT radio. There's a couple of thousand of those, so it's not that rare. And a uh, Johnson Invader and a a Cosmophone 35 serial number 12. According to Brian, there's probably about uh, 20 or 30 of those left. So, Ben, good to hear you. Your your concoction of radios, as usual, sounds very good. God bless you all. Keep safe. Wear your masks. W5XU. Okay, David. Spectacular signal. Really, 10 over S9 on this meter. Now, did you tell me you have the amplifier on, but the meter just doesn't show it, or is there no amplifier there? No, the L4B is on, uh, but 
know, it's it's speaking about maybe 200 milliamps. Uh, I, I, and the, the trouble has to be with the accelerator because uh, I'm getting maybe a hundred milliamps peak on that. So I have to. I, the the, uh, the bargain basement new 6JB6s, I think probably were not. Okay. Yeah, that may well be the case, but uh, it's got a nice signal to it. And uh, we'll compare it to Nick's uh, signal, and he can tell me what he's got on tonight. Good to hear you, David. Uh, and with the Johnson uh, Viking Invader, I think I've said this to you before, no one has ever succeeded in making one of those work, of all the people that I know of. Good luck with that. Any uh, any additional comments on your end? Well, don't snake by me yet. I, uh, <laughs> I've got it rebuilt. I haven't plugged it in. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm working on the uh, mechanical down mechanism right now. But uh, I have a good source uh, uh, within walking distance of me. Uh, he'll get it working if I can. You'll uh, you'll you'll see all the mistakes they made as they tried to uh, come up with a sideband uh, station. They were they were ten or fifteen years behind everybody else. All right, great to hear you, David. All right, uh, Nick, talk to us. K5EF, how about it? K5LYN. Hey, K5LYN and and the rest of everybody. This is K5EF. Hop in, everyone. Really good tonight. Uh, everyone has a great signal. Dan's got really excellent audio. It, it, I think his, his signal sounds great. Uh, over this way, he's a little over S9, and you're about uh, just a shade under S9. Anyway, running a Drake line today, uh, an R4C receiver, uh, T4XC, it's been modified, it's running a pair of 6146s, and uh, it's driving a uh, an old RF Communications RF102 amplifier. But uh, everybody sounds good today. And um, I got finished with those little Johnson rigs. I have to tell you, um, now they've been sitting on my shelf like yours for, for forever, and finally I decided to do something. Um, I, I, I saw a YouTube video, a fella up in uh, uh, Nine Land, I guess, he's up there in Michigan, had, had built his up, built a little power supply, and they found it really good. So I said, well, you know, I ought to do something. So I did, I built a power supply for these two. And um, I gotta tell you, you had to have guts to have a mobile rig back in 1951, which is when they, these things were made. Because you needed this mobile radio, you needed either crystals or a little tiny VFO, a converter for your uh, broadcast radio so you can make it uh, tune by uh, either 75 meters or 20. And then you needed three power supplies. Uh, to run all of it, one of them being a dynamo. So, I mean, it was it was work, and all you got was all you have it was 30 watts. Go ahead. Yeah, I was I was around in those days, 1963, Nick, and most of the people used crystal controlled and a uh, Gonset uh, mobile converter in front of the broadcast uh, receiver in the car. And I, I have several of those, by the way. They're they're beautifully uh, done. But uh, what I remember as a high school kid, uh, the AMers and their, their AM mobile guys got together and had a transmitter hunt every night on 75 meters for over a year. These were grown ups but they reverted to uh, childhood and had the best time anybody ever had, over. Oh, yeah. The, uh, it must have been a lot of fun back then trying to get all this stuff to work in your car. You couldn't you couldn't transmit very long because uh, uh, without running the RPMs up to about 3,000 on your poor engine, <laughs> it sucked the battery dry. Those were before alternators for the most part. Oh, yeah, that's what I mean, generators, you know, it's rough. But anyway, I'm on the lookout now for a little Gonset uh, uh, G, uh, I think it's a 66B, a little uh, mobile receiver. It's real small, tiny. That ought to make it uh, just about right. Good. If you need an extra Gonset mobile converter, I can probably come up with one. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm not going to try to go mobile. No. I wouldn't either. It makes a good-looking uh, base station, though. All right, Nick, and you're about 10 dB stronger than uh, David on the uh, meter here. Any other comments? Oh, well, that's it. Uh, everybody have a great uh, night. Everyone sounds good. It's K5EF. All right, let's go back and see if KC5WOF is here. Uh, Jimmy, are you still there? No. Okay, all right. Uh, KK5GR, Matt, talk to us. Oh, there I am. Uh, this is KK5VR. 
that out here where uh, we've gotten a little bit of rain today. Not, not as much as uh, we need, but uh, what we have gotten has been a slow rain, so it, uh, it's soaking in a little bit, and we needed that real bad. The forest was getting extremely dry and kept catching on fire with alarming regularity. Anyway, uh, t this evening I'm operating on my uh, Yezu FT-1000D, 200 plus watts out, and the antenna is a uh, double zip at 60 feet, 250 foot long. And uh, that's how it goes here on the uh, Fat Chicken Ranch this uh, evening. Not much else going on other than a little bit of amplifier building out in the shop, but... Uh, you know, uh, gotta gotta keep busy with something while you're, you know, just staying around the house, not going in any ham fest or anything. Back to you there, uh, Lynn, uh, kg 5 br Outstanding signal, Matt, and you may notice I moved uh, to your frequency a little bit better. Hey, about the fires out there, about a month ago, you remember the uh, car fire that started a uh, fire on the Cottletown Road at the intersection of uh, uh, intersect, uh, in the Park Road 1C and the Cottletown Road? That's half a block from my rent house. I was there. Roger, roger. Yeah, it was happening all over, and grass fires on, along the highway medians were almost a daily thing there until uh, we started getting a little rain. Yeah, I thought, is this the third time my place is going to burn out here? But they, the guys got there and got it out pretty quick. All right, good to hear you, Matt. All right, moving on to HE5XP. Hey, Kenneth, uh, bring us up to date. K5LYN. Yeah, this is Kenneth up here in Central Texas, Brownwood, HE5XP. Everything's doing great here. HT-32A, going out the helicopter HT-32A, 3A amplifier, 32A transmitter. I'm receiving on a Kenwood TS-530. Got it going on a G5 RV antenna. I got a D-104 user interface microphone. Everything's doing good here. Had about three inches of rain, currently about 54 degrees. Back to net. Thanks for picking me up, man. Everybody's sounding great. You did beautiful work on that HD32A, Kenneth. And I forgot when we were talking about that, did I mention that there's a selenium rectifier that's the bias rectifier and you need to change that to a piece of silicon? This one already had one in there. It looked like a stock silicone diode in there, like a, not a little bitty diode, but you just covered with a big plastic tube or something. But it already had one in there. It looked battery to me, but it's working. Okay, okay, good. Because if that fails and you lose your negative bias, you also lose your finals, but uh, you're on top of it. Very nicely done. All right, moving on. KC5L, Tom. Hey, good evening, Lynn, and the boat anchor set. Tom, KC5L in San Antonio. And uh, tonight we're talking on the uh, Central Electronics 200B. And that's driving the Electronics 600L amplifier doing about 300 watts into a uh, balanced fine tuner, homebrew open wire line and a 110 foot doublet up about 15 feet. And microphone is a D104A, a D104, and uh, the uh, receiver is an R390A. And uh, really sound a great size. Uh, and uh, thanks for picking me up. Uh, don't really have anything else, so uh, back to you, kc 5 l Outstanding signal, Tom. We've got really great propagation and good signals and not that noisy considering uh, there's so much uh, uh, thunderstorm activity in the area. Kind of strange, but very, very nice. Good to hear you, Tom. All right, let's see if Lyle's still over there. K5LT, how about it, Lyle? Hey, good evening, Lynn. There, Boyle Burnett. This is K5LT, uh, located just outside of Bernie, Texas. And, and Lynn, good timing, because look at the radar. i got a storm coming at me, so I'm probably going to unplug shortly after this. Uh, but everybody's kind of great. Uh, the noise floor is actually quite low tonight, so actually good copy on everybody. Doing the usual here, run the heat kit, SB-101, through the uh, heat kit, SB-221 amp, uh, through heat kit tuner, out to the antenna, running through the wet cedar trees. And uh, everybody's sounding great. Got about a little over three inches of rain this morning, and uh, enjoying it. Nice cool weather, really enjoying that. So, back to you, Lynn. K5LT. Very nice signal. Very nice. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, so I'm not the only one that's noticing how quiet it is. Good to hear you. All right. Hey, Sammy, you want to talk to us? How about W5DPP? How about it? 
Well, I'm here listening. Good evening to everybody out there. It's kind of noisy over here. Another hot day. I'm ready for a little bit of uh, fall weather. I thought we were supposed to have some 60-degree weather here this week. But, uh, I don't know if it's going to show up or not. Anyway, I'm uh, I'm just on the flex here this evening listening there. Uh, everybody have a good evening. W5DPP. Outstanding, Sammy. Yeah, uh, I think the temperature is going to come down some, but not as much as they were talking. We're right on the edge of that deal, apparently. But uh, it sure has given us some nice rain. Good to hear you. All right, how about uh, way over there, Doug, W5IS. What do you say, Doug? Doug was in there a while ago. Maybe the storms are getting that far over. W5IS. Doug, you still hanging out? Well, maybe he'll be back. All right. Were there any other earlies that I missed while we were uh, making a list of earlies before the net? K5LYN. Yeah, W5DK. Yeah, Don. I knew I heard you, but I didn't get you written down. How you doing? Uh, I'm doing great, Lynn. Uh, just uh, hanging out here in Comal County, enjoying the rain, looking for the cold front, like Sammy said, and uh, going back and forth with uh, Lyle on the text here as we're waiting our turn. I'm uh, using the same Drake station, the TR4 tonight uh, with a D104 and the L4 amp pushing some stuff out to the double extended ZEP antenna. And it's above the trees, no cedars. Well, there's a little bit, but um, let you have it to the, go to the next one. Thanks for running the net. W5, DK. Outstanding signal. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably getting a lot more out of your L4B than I get out of mine driving only with 40 watts. I got uh, almost 400 watts, but I'm not... Uh, 40 watts doesn't do what, this, uh, what it really needs. Great to hear you. Okay. I usually, when I pass it over to another net control switch stations, I do have the cheap and easy SSB, the homebrew uh, station built by KG7TR, warmed up. But maybe with uh, us being a little bit short, maybe I'll just keep uh, sitting right here since I finally got all my cheat notes in place here after spilling beer on the table. Uh, Dan, how about it? Uh, KWOZ, see what you can drum up. K5LYN. Okay, Lynn, hopefully I'm not too badly distorted here now. Tell me if I am. You're fine. Okay. That's Dan, K-H-W-O-Z, downtown Houston, the sanctuary city of Texas. And uh, we'll see if we can pick up a few more people here for the Boat Anchors Unlimited. I'll take a real quick uh, shot here just to see if Jimmy, KC5WOF, is back. Uh, are you back, Jimmy? Shoot, he was strong here when he first came in earlier. Okay, uh, how about Doug, W5IS? Are you back, Doug? No, Doug. Okay, uh, anyone else would like to check into the Boat Anchors Unlimited? Come with your call sign, uh, please, one at a time. In zero, go Victor Kilo. K5 Bravo India Zebra. Okay, I got two there. The first one, I got my headphones on. I'm hoping I can pick you up, but, uh, I got Victor Kilo, is that right? Go ahead. Yeah, that's November Zero, Golf Victor Kilo, over. Uh, November what? November Zero, GBK, N Zero, GBK, over. November Zero, Victor Kilo? Germany Victor Kilo, Golf Victor Kilo. Dang. What am I missing here? He's strong, but then he just well, drops off. Is that Victor Kilo Golf? Want me to do Golf, a relay? Victor Kilo. There's somebody doubled there. Yeah, go ahead, Lynn. Yeah, it's uh, November Zero Golf, Victor Kilo. Go ahead and talk to us. Okay, real fine. This is N0 GVK. My name is Kurt, Charlie Uniform Rumble. I'm located up here in South Central Nebraska. And uh, tonight I'm talking on a Galaxy GT 550. And uh, this is the original uh, 550, not the 558. Still in its galaxy. And here's that was a show triple four, got the matching speaker console, got a digital display on it. Running that into an off-center fit antenna up about 25 feet. And we're getting some cool uh, weather up here down into the 40s at night. We've got about an inch of rain here. 
Western South Central Nebraska. Back to Ness, this is Andrew GDK. Did we talk to you once before? I think maybe I, t I remember on Nebraska station one time before. Yeah, I think I checked in about a month ago. Yeah, okay. Any chance you know my friend over in Clark, Nebraska, WB0 Sugar Nancy Fox? Yep, I know Marshall well. Yeah, well, tell him uh, Tell him we talk. He and I used to talk on 20 meters all the time, but 20 has been so bad, <laughs> lately we haven't been able to do it. Your galaxy is uh, doing a nice job. Tell us what you have to do to get it running. Well, it had the normal thing, uh, trans the uh, resistors are all, uh, all of what tolerance, and had uh, to have probably about a dozen uh, <laughs> resistors changed up, was the most uh, thing it needed, and then an alignment, and away it goes. And, Okay, well, you've done very nice work. It's doing a great job. Did you tell me you've got an amplifier, or are we here in barefooted? I'm just doing what the rig is. I'm getting about 225 out of it. Spectacular. Tell me about your antenna. Antenna is just an off center fit antenna, half about 25 feet, 16210, 265 foot long. Well, we've got great conditions tonight, Kurt. Glad you came by. Anything else for the net? Okay, okay, all right. Well, keep us posted on the project, and I hope we're done. Okay, uh, uh, let me see here. Uh, Kurt, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, bye. 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 Bye.
So that's it. Uh, boy, I'll tell you what, that uh, GT550 brings back memories. I had one of those. It was a, it was a gray radio. And, uh, you know, you, you go through the years and you get a lot of radios and stuff. And every now and then you, you, you get a radio and, you, and then you sell it. And, boy, you feel sorry that you did that. That was a big... Uh, big mistake and that was that was one of the radios I had that uh, I got that seller's remorse a, a day later and I said man I shouldn't have done that wish I would have kept it but uh, there you go what can you do anyway very good everybody come in good strong signals tonight uh, and uh, well we'll sit back and listen to everybody else uh, back to net control K5BIZ and uh, sorry about the dead battery uh, you know these solid state transistor things they uh, they are, they're just so unreliable. Roger. Yeah, okay, Biz. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, uh, that Swan 350D is sounding very nice. Uh, that amplifier is not hurting it at all on the end of it. Uh, good audio, good strong signal here in Houston. Okay, let's see. Next one I heard was uh, Doug, I believe, K5 or W5IS. Good afternoon, uh, Dave, and all the rest of the crew. Uh, I guess they uh, drug you in the net control tonight, and, and uh, doing a good job. I'm on uh, my TSA service tonight, and uh, driving a SB1000, getting a little more power out of it, and uh, using the Ultramax uh, dual band uh, transistor. And uh, sure. I uh, the microphone. Oh, I guess I said the wrong thing in the microphone. I uh, thought I was on the sure full 44, but I, I get confused. I'm 86 years old, Dan, and uh, things don't come out always the way I mean them. But anyway, carry on. You've done a great job. Maybe five I am. Okay, Doug. Thank you. Boy, you got a great signal today. Then it's interesting. Uh, I'd be uh, operating the exact same station that you are uh, had I not discovered that I had a, uh, a coax on that 830 hooked to something else earlier. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd be on the exact same station, the 830, the SB1000, and the uh, Ultimax double bazooka. So anyway... Uh, sound good. Good to hear you, Doug. Sorry we missed you in the earlier check-ins when Lynn was in here uh, calling the net. This is the uh, Wednesday evening, the only one, uh, uh, Boat Anchors Unlimited net. And I got, uh, where are we are? Where are we at here? Uh, D0 SED. Good evening. Well, good evening, Dan, and all the boat anchors. K0 SCD and Tyler. Uh, tonight I'm on a Trustual Kenwood 520, the Collins 30L1, the dipole up 40 odd feet, MC50 microphone, and that's about it from Tyler. Back to net. K0 SCD. Man, what? Just a perfect signal, perfect station, right on frequency, a good signal. <laughs> You can't beat that station. Uh, can't beat it. Don't ever get rid of it. Okay, thank you very much for checking in. This is Dan, K-H-W-O-Z. We're in downtown Houston, about the middle of the city, or as close as you can get to the middle. And the band, actually, other than a few static crashes, is in pretty nice shape tonight. So uh, who else do we have that might like to check in to the Boat Anchors Unlimited? Please come with your call sign now. WA5EDX. Was that you, Byron? Roger, Roger. Well, go right ahead. Well, good evening, Dan, and uh, everybody else on the good old boat anchor net. Uh, tonight we're on the Kenwood, but uh, uh, I have to report it's not a boat anchor. It's not a boat anchor. It's a Kenwood TS50. Little, little uh, more of a mobile rig, uh, all solid state, and I'm running it barefoot. And the only reason I'm on it tonight is I pulled it out over the weekend to uh, work on it. Uh, seemed like four or five years ago, the transmitter 
uh, part of it went out, and I just put it on the shelf. I decided on the weekend I'd work on something besides the boat anchor, so uh, I got back and uh, got reacquainted with troubleshooting uh, SMT or SMD devices on uh, double-sided uh, uh, PWBs, and uh, that was quite a little challenge. I think I'll go back to hybrids, high, high. So as I said, I'm on uh, barefoot, uh, running about uh, uh, 175 watts peak to peak out, I guess, and uh, just using a little Kenwood mobile mic. So nothing fancy, just wanted to check in on it since I had it plugged in on the bench, and uh, just wanted to get an audio report and uh, signal report. And we had a lot of good rain today. I probably got about, oh, anywhere four or five inches here today. And we've had about, uh, makes a total of about ten inches for the week, I guess. So we've had enough rain. Back to you, Dan. And uh, thanks a lot for uh, uh, helping Lynn with the net tonight. WA5EDX, beautiful Bluffdale. Yeah, okay, Byron. That thing sounds great. I have a couple of questions. That's a... Yeah, 50. Those were nice little radios. I think they're grossly underrated, to tell you the truth. You know, they, are, they were and probably still are the smallest 100-watt mobile radio ever built by anyone. <coughs> but yours sounds exceptionally good audio-wise. Uh, but you said you're running 175 watts barefoot? That's kind of driving it hard, huh? Yeah. Yeah, roger, roger. Well, I've... Uh, I read up a little bit on the internet and other places, uh, and some other folks have told me that uh, the finals will actually do more than they set it out of the factory. They set it a little conservatively, and you can go in there and just uh, find a little pot inside that you just turn up a little bit, and uh, you can crank it on up, and apparently it uh, works pretty good. So as long as you're running sideband, I, I think it's uh, okay. Roger. Well, I'll tell you what, it really does sound good and plenty strong, too. Good job on that, Byron. Okay. Uh, Steve up there in uh, Tyler, man, he was uh, at 520. I just can't get over those old Kenwoods. I'm kind of a Kenwood person anyway, I guess, but you just can't get over those 820s, 520s, 830s. They, they're just old standby, and that 50 fits right in there. Okay, let's see. What else do we have here? Uh, anyone else like to check into the Boat Anchors Unlimited with your solid state or preferably Boat Anchor Radio or what kind of neat old gear do you have? Come with your call sign now. Well, we're running out of uh, running out of catch here. G uh, <laughs> Lynn, I'm going to have to get a different kind of bait, I guess. One more call. Reach it. Anyone else like to check into the Boat Anchors Unlimited net? Come with your call sign now. Reach it. Reach it? Go ahead. All right, this is Mr. Reach it. And uh, there's been a lot of mention of the uh, L4s and L4Bs out there, so I thought I would just come back and say I got the... I've got an L4 and an L4B for sale if anybody was looking for one there. Uh, this is W5DPP. Yeah, hey, I have a question for you on that, Sammy. Uh, were they standard uh, when they originally came out with the three 400s in them? I've never had one, but were they standard with the three 400s? I think originally they had three 400s or four 400s in it, uh in the L4, but both of these have three 500s in Oh, okay. Yeah, info. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it had the 400s. Uh, the, the manual I have shows that, yes. Is yours an L4 or an L4B? Mine's I have one four, each. Uh, serial number 19. No, I mean uh, the guy that's in there, Sammy. Did you say yours was an L4, sir? Yeah, this is Don, W5, DK. Mine's my plain L4, uh, early serial number, 19. 19 what? That's the serial number. 
Oh, serial number 19. I guess that is an earlier one. Okay, cool. I don't know if y'all heard that or not, but Sammy W5DPP has got some nice Drake amplifiers, L4s and L4Bs. And they're bruisers. They used to be the standard of the industry. If you had one of those, you're a top dog. I'll add something to that, Dan. Yeah, go ahead, Lynn. Yeah, there's good uh, upgrade kits for those uh, early Drake amplifiers, the L4 and the L4B, you know, uh, soft start and all kind of stuff like that. So they're not really hard at all to upgrade and put them on the air. I think the biggest, the best improvement is the bias mod, you know, where you can get that heat out of the power supply. Do these that you have have that mod in them, Sammy? Well, I don't remember. I know they got new capacitors in the in the power supply, but I don't I don't know if both either one of them have been biased mine. Okay. Well I do know the the new capacitors are a big item all by itself. Yeah, the soft start so that the switch the on off switch doesn't fail. Can't get those. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of good mods that people have for this older gear, and it's uh, most of it, for the most part, I think, is a positive improvement. Okay, my name is Dan. The call is Kilowatt Beat Whiskey Oscar Zulu. We're located in downtown Houston, Texas, and uh, we'll take one more standby before we turn it back to Lynn to see if there's anyone else who'd like to check in the Boat Anchors Unlimited. Please come with your call sign now. Nothing heard, Lynn. That doesn't mean there's no one there, but uh, they just don't hear me. So go ahead and uh, see what you can dig up. K5LYN, KWZ. Very well done, uh, Dan. Thanks for the help. Uh, I, I thought we might be a little short tonight because a lot of people probably got their antennas uh, disconnected. And I thought I might be one of them, but so far, so good. All right, this is K5LYN, Lynn in Austin on the Central Electronics 10A from 1952. Uh, and some things to help it uh, drive the L4B here. Uh, who wants to talk boat anchors tonight? K5LYN, calling and listening. Well, that we may have covered the territory. One last call. Anybody else want to talk? I guess not. Gentlemen, thanks for uh, being here. The rain has been great. I hope everybody's getting as much as we did today. I'll say my 73s and listen out. Any final comments, Dan? I'll let you wrap it up. K5LYN. Okay, Lynn. No, I don't have any final comments, I guess. I was cheating tonight. I'm just talking on a Kenwood 440 and driving a, a brand-new heat kit SB1000 amplifier along with that... Uh, Two band bazooka up there, about 42 feet. And the microphone is a uh, Kenwood MC50. In terms of projects, I got a whole bunch of them here, but uh, I haven't gotten any of them working far enough yet to brag on them, so I have to, <laughs> have to wait a while. I seem to have lost the uh, touch, you might say. And uh, I was going to make a comment to Kurt there with his Galaxy GT550 that. I used to pride myself in being able to fix just about anything I ever bought at a ham fest. You know, I always expect that it's not going to work. That I wouldn't, like my wife always says, if it if it works, you won't want it. So I I expect things not to work when I buy them, and I always pride myself in being able to get them up and rolling a bit. But uh, the one radio that helped me completely, and I'm embarrassed to admit it, is a Galaxy Five. There was a policeman at, uh, I think it was uh, either a Houston or an Orange Ham Fest had one, and he said it worked beautiful, it looked good. Gave him $50 for it with the power supply, and uh, I couldn't get a peep out of that other than sparks and arcs and smoke. And it didn't matter how many years I kept that thing, I kept going back to it, and I could not, could not resurrect it, so that one, that one beat me to death. Anyway... One more last check. Anybody else for the Boat Anchors Unlimited, please come down. W5RCD. Ooh, RCD. There's a live one. Please go ahead, sir. 
Uh, good evening. This is Randy Whiskey Five Romeo Charlie Delta. Just got in from church and kind of running a little bit late. Uh, use a Kenwood TS uh, 830S tonight with uh, MC50 microphone and all oh, about 400 watts out an SB200 into an inverted V about 50 feet. Uh, but I just tried to get in from church in time to get in here, Roger. Roger, where are you located, Randy? Uh, located in Gilmer, Texas, uh, in the Longview, Tyler area. Roger. Yeah, there's uh, one of our buddies from down by Victoria is planning on moving up that way, so you can have some more neighbors. Well, that'll be fine. We welcome all of them. But uh, I do appreciate y'all letting me get in here. I've got a few phone calls I gotta make, but I'm glad I did get it. I was able to get in here and get on the net and everything. So I'll say 73 to everyone. May God bless. Uh, w5 RCD. Okay, Randy, doing a good job of that Kenwood 830 and the uh, SB 200 there. No problem whatsoever. Thanks for coming by. Have a good day. Have a good evening, and get take care of your phone calls and stuff. We'll see you next week, hopefully. And zero GDK recheck. Uh, yeah, who is the recheck? And zero GDK. Yeah, it's Kirk. Yeah, go ahead, Kirk. Yeah, and zero GDK. I just wanted to make a comment about the fellow with the Galaxy Five. Uh, I've been pretty fortunate. I also have a Galaxy Five. I'll probably. Hook that up here and uh, check in with that some evening. I got uh, several galaxies, and I've been really fortunate. I have a friend uh, in Zero GMR. He's a ham here in uh, Lincoln, Nebraska. He actually worked at High Gain, and he serviced the galaxy. So, uh, out of the galaxies I'm using, he's been uh, helping me to restore. So, nothing like having an actual factory technician to help work on your radio, though. Roger. Yeah, well, that makes me feel a little better. I have fixed a couple of the, the three band, the uh, three models, but uh, not that five. That one, that one kind of killed me. But they are great. I could, I grew up in Michigan, and there's, uh, there were a lot of different nets going on up there because there weren't a lot of things to do in the winter. And I swear that just about every net control of every one of those nets was running a GT 550. <laughs> but okay, well, thanks very much for the info. Uh, Kurt, that that rig really does sound good. All right, thanks for letting me jump in there. And uh, yeah, one of these days, I have an old uh, dual band of '84. I'll be checking in with that too. So many trees, guys. In there, you can. Roger. Yeah, please come back and as often as you can. Okay, last one. Any anybody else out there like to make uh, a check in and tell us what's going on with their boat anchors or whatever radio they're on? Anybody for the boat anchors net? Come with your call sign now. I'll make one last comment, Dan. Okay, it's all yours. Wrap her up. Yeah, I got a text from Matt uh, who said he's recording tonight, so we'll have our entertainment laid out for us in the morning if we want to go through all this. Over again, and I always do. 73s, K5LYN. Roger. Yeah, good night, everybody. Thanks for participating. See you next Wednesday. K W O Z. I'll be clear.